Hey everyone, how are you all doing? I am back today with a new video that I've been meaning to make for quite some time now because it's a topic that I think is extremely important at um, the phase that we're going through and I just wanted to share my personal experience in hopes that somebody else might benefit from it. So today I want to talk about um, anxiety, panic attacks, dealing with stress, and how to cope with that in this difficult time. And just generally, the first signs of, I would say, stress and major anxiety started for me about six months ago um, when I was going through a major transition in my life. Um, and that is why I thought it would be good for me to first talk about um, my personal experience with stress and anxiety before I share some of my tips. And yeah, I just hope that it will be helpful for some of you. So first of all, I wanna say that for those of you who do not know me, I um, quit my job about six months ago. So in October last year, and then I started a new job in November. And I feel like this was the big transition where, you know, I really got out of my comfort zone. I really experienced a lot of new things. And, you know, I, I had to start driving every day to work, which was something very new to me. And for those of you who do not know, I live in Dubai. However, right now, because of um, unfortunate um, situation that we're all in, I am stuck in London for a couple of months. Yeah, so driving in Dubai is actually a little stressful and yeah, I just felt like, you know, it was a very new experience and combined with work, combined with just this major transition in my life, I experienced um, very new emotions. And I personally am the kind of person who has higher cortisol levels in general. I would say I'm just quite sensitive and, you know, it's just something that I noticed over the years. You know, I get easily like stressed about things that for some people are just absolutely, you know, kind of meaningless, I would say. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I get sweaty hands and all those things, but then again, I drink a lot of coffee and I'm just, like I said, generally uh, more anxious, I guess, than other people. So the reason why I started talking about this major transition in my life is because I was hospitalized. I mean, I guess saying being hospitalized is a little bit extreme because technically I was just admitted to an emergency room. So I will try to explain very quickly what happened. I remember that it was towards the end of uh, my first week at work. So I think it was maybe Wednesday or Thursday because the bye week working week is Sunday to Thursday. And I had a little car accident where somebody bumped into me. So imagine I started a new job. I had a first, my first ever car accident. I think it was just sort of like the buildup of all these emotions and that's why I experienced, experienced them towards the end of the week. What happened was I went on a lunch break and I remember I stopped at the Starbucks after my lunch just to grab a coffee. And then I was just shouting to the barista for a few minutes before I went back to my car. And as I was going to the car, literally just like a few footsteps away from the coffee shop, I had the sharpest pain in like my chest area and it just freaked me out because I've had that once before um I would say maybe in September or August I'm not quite sure now but um I, I I was also doing a very random thing like I was applying my makeup and I just was like oh my gosh you know I'm freaking out what happened I I was completely relaxed at that time but I just wasn't sure what was going on with me. And that sharp pain is very, very scary because you honestly think, oh my gosh, am I having a heart attack? Am I dying? What's happening, you know? And luckily, since I knew that it happened before, I, I quickly started to react and I just like messaged my boyfriend. I said, listen, it's happening again and I don't know what to do. I can't take a deep breath. Every time I took a deep breath, it would just, it felt like a, somebody was stabbing me in my chest, you know? And so he immediately said, listen, stay where you are, I'm coming. So he brought me to the hospital and at the emergency room, they instantly asked me, you know, like all these questions, if, if this happened before. And I said, yes, it happened a few months ago, um, but this is the first time where it was going on for about an hour. And, you know, when you're having a sharp pain for almost an hour and you cannot take a deep breath and I'm 25, you know, so it's, it's, it's very, very scary. I honestly was like, oh my gosh, am I going to die? type of thing and you know they did blood blood tests they they did the ECG and they couldn't see anything so they just gave me like some painkillers I think I took a nap and I felt a little bit better I, I still felt really like shocked by the whole situation and I was just like oh my gosh you know it's it's not okay what's going on with me 
So I really started to think about what is the reason because they literally couldn't see anything in any of the tests that they did for me. And I spoke to a few of my friends and then I think a couple of weeks later, one of my friends told me that she had panic attacks. And I was just like, actually, sorry, I just got goosebumps remembering this. Oh, it's very eerie. Um, experience to go through panic attacks and anxiety in general i'm actually not able to differentiate the two very well so maybe those of you who have it or know more about it could share with me what is the difference but from what i was able to sort of figure out and um just kind of learn about i think that you could call this a panic attack because before when i heard about it i really didn't know what it was i never had this experience before in my life but i heard of people who had it and i was just like oh panic attack what is that like you know I, I i kind of brushed it off and i didn't even think that it was a real thing until it happened to me so my friend she said that um you know she started having even blurry visions and that you know she couldn't even drive they even prescribed her glasses and she was just freaking out and like she described me all these insane symptoms and you know that they that she um, couldn't go to work for two months and they did like MRIs of her brain and all these scary, you know, medical exams, basically. I mean, they're not scary, but you know what I mean? They, they really went and checked her thoroughly. So and they couldn't find anything. And I just was like, OK, that is so strange because kind of like that was my experience. And so she told me that later on they prescri prescribed her with Xanax and I was like whoa that is crazy and she said listen you know I was also super against it and then she took I think the very very small dose and like half a tablet or something like that and it actually helped her she said the first like her doctor recommended the first second you experience any of the symptoms that you've had over the last couple of months try to take the Xanax and see how you feel and she said 10 minutes and it was gone so I was very surprised to hear that and I thought, okay, let me just look into it. Let me research it a little bit. And I remember I went to see a cardiologist again because it reoccurred, but I, at that time when it reoccurred, I thought, okay, no, this is not real. It's not really happening. I mean, I didn't say it's not real, but I, I told myself that it's, it's nothing serious and it actually stopped within a couple of minutes. So I was like, okay, that is weird. But I still went to a cardiologist because obviously I want uh, the opinion of a professional and I was still very much concerned about why am I going through this? And the doctor did again the ECG and all those things. And he said, there's nothing wrong with you. So I was getting really concerned. You know, it's when it's sharp pain in your heart area, you just like, why? What, what, what is going on with me? I spent a lot of time researching about panic attacks and you know what causes them what are the signs of it and what are people experiencing and I realized that you know I was like 99% sure that that's what I was going through and I just want to really really emphasize this guys that the more harsh you are on yourself mentally the more likely you are to experience something like this and I don't wish that upon my worst enemy to experience this because it's honestly very very scary. I also want to emphasize that learning about supplements and uh, nutrition and its impacts on our bodies and our well-being has been a huge passion of mine for many years. I've never really shared that I suppose but I just was always very interested and I started doing a lot of research so I bought a few of like supplements right away. I bought things like rhodiola, which is very, very good for you. Um, I also started taking ashwagandha, which is also a natural supplement, and it really helps a lot of people to deal with stress. And I also want to show you what I invested in here in London. So I bought this amino acid L-theanine, and it is a very, very good uh, supplement to take because our bodies are not able to produce L-theanine naturally. And um, it actually has a huge impact on your sleep balance, on your stress levels, so on your cortisol. And I personally have been only taking it for about a couple of weeks now. And I do feel a little bit more relaxed. I can't really say that it completely um, kind of removes the anxiety and the anxiousness, but it definitely helps you feel a little bit more like relaxed. It doesn't make you drowsy or anything like that. So I definitely recommend LTNN. And I also have something called psychic protection spray i don't know why i bought it to be honest i mean 
I do know why I bought it, but it just like makes me laugh because it's nothing to do with evil spirits or anything like that. It's just like a very relaxing spray and I have a few of those at home like with lavender and I just like to spray them um, on my pillow before I go to sleep or just kind of on myself just in the room. I just really like the smell. It's just very relaxing. So it might not be something very, very powerful in the long run, but it definitely helps you feel a bit more relaxed in the moment. So definitely encourage you to buy something like this. But most importantly, I think of all the things that help me and that I really, really love and started practicing quite often is meditation. So let me quickly tell you my story with meditation. So I started doing it, I think about four or five months ago after the whole incident uh, with the panic attacks. Meditation is something that I've heard about for a long time. I've never personally tried it and I was always very intrigued, but I just thought it's one of those things where you're just like sitting there and you're like, um, and then all of a sudden you experience some, you know, crazy, I don't know, euphoria feelings, but it's not like that at all. So my first meditation experience was after I took, uh, after I spoke to my friend and she said, yeah, you have to try it. I do it daily, sometimes in the morning, sometimes, you know, in the evening or whatever. And I was like alone at home, I remember. And I just laid on my floor and I looked up on YouTube, like guided meditation. And I just pressed, I think the one that had like the most likes or views or something like that. And guys, <laughs> I cannot explain to you what I experienced. It was unreal. I told you I'm rather sensitive but last thing i expected was to cry during meditation i was bawling halfway through the thing and i was just like what the hell is going on i remember the emotions like rising within me and i was like whoa this is insane like why am i i was kind of shocked myself you know i i, I didn't expect to cry and it's one of the most beautiful meditations ever. I haven't actually done it again because I'm just kind of scared to face those emotions again a little bit, I suppose. But I'm definitely going to link it down below. It was such a beautiful experience. And actually, I'm going to share some of my favorite um, meditations from YouTube uh, down below in the description. After that experience, I felt so relieved. But at the same time, I knew I was hooked for life and it was just very life changing moment for me. So I've been practicing meditation, um, I would say a few times a week now. I really like to practice it in the evening um, after, you know, the whole day is done and, you know, you can just relax and um, just let those emotions kind of out. And it, it's a very beautiful feeling. It's definitely something that I encourage a lot of people to try. Don't say no before you try. Um, I started slowly going off from guided meditations to just like simple meditations with music. It's also very, very powerful. Um, you can manifest a lot of things, but that's a whole nother topic. And lastly, I wanted to share with you guys the book that I'm currently reading. It is called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. It is written, I think, in 1963, and it is a very, very powerful book. I know many people who read it and they swear by it. So I've just kind of started it. I'm a very slow reader. So um, yeah, it takes me a while to get through the book, but I'm a firm believer that everything that we experience actually comes from our subconscious mind. You know, every everything, just your attitude towards life, your experiences in life come because of your mind so once you kind of learn how to control your mind you can achieve many great things including managing your anxiety so guys i hope that this video was somewhat helpful and that you learned something new hopefully useful i just want to say that you know don't be afraid to talk about your emotions you know a lot of people are afraid to talk about their emotions and feelings of anxiety because they think oh you know i'm gonna be judged or i don't want to complain i don't want to put this burden of you know what i'm going through on other people but it's not okay to keep it all in because trust me you can end up like me in a hospital with freaking sharp stabbing pains in your chest and it's not fun so please 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 take care of yourselves it's a very difficult time for all of us and i think you know once you're in a better state of mind you can help and be there for other people so just yeah take care of each other i'm sending you a big hug and i love you all please let me know any of your own experiences that you may have had or maybe you know someone who had them. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.